Four years ago, I just started as an Acumen Global Fellow, a tax power system in rural India. And immediately, I find myself in this car in the middle of nowhere at night, driving on a road way too bumpy to get five minutes of sleep. And as soon as I close my eyes, mosquitoes swarm over me. And after a night of drive, we arrive in this village that seemed to come from 200 years ago, where there is no running water, there are no toilets, and I see kids running toward the school where a teacher does not show up. But at 6 p.m. every night, our electricity does show up and brightens the whole village. And I remember thinking, why, of all the places on the planet, would anybody ever want to start a company in such a remote area? And one night, I asked Ganesh, the CEO, and I remember him looking at the stars, turning a little bit toward me, and saying, Mario, I wanted to bring light in the darkest place I could think of. There are words that you cannot unhear, feelings that you cannot unfeel, and resolutions that you cannot untake. And that night, I resolved to start my own social enterprise called We Do to bring education and leadership development to thousands of girls in places like Afghanistan, Myanmar, Cambodia, Thailand. Starting We Do has been a bumpy road in itself. But in the hardest moment, you showed up. As mentors, as advisors, as funders. Some of you even left their home and families behind to come all the way across planet Earth to Thailand and help we do take education in the harshest place I could think of. I joined Vancouver Plus Acumen because I knew I wanted to make a contribution and have an impact. I just didn't know how. In 2009, I find myself sitting at a table with some of the most inspiring leaders that I know in Vancouver. And as I look around the table, I hear a little voice in my head. And it says, you're not a successful investment banker like he is. She comes from a family of entrepreneurs. You don't know the first thing about starting your own business. What do you think you're doing here? You can't make a contribution. Shrinking back in my chair, all I want to do is run. I should leave. But I stay. And in three years, I shift. It's 2012, and I'm in a similar room, but this time it's filled with chapter leaders from around the world. And instead of a little voice, a light bulb. We're all in this together. This is my community, and I belong here. That weekend, I meet Mario, and I'm so connected to his vision for We Do that I leave my job in Vancouver and I fly to Bangkok. Volunteering with We Do, I get to teach and impart the leadership lessons that I learned at Plus Acumen on some of the most inspiring young women that I've ever met. And I get to say to them, I believe in you, because Acumen believes in me, and here, I get to be my best self and give my best self. Two years ago, I'm in a slum just outside of Nairobi, Kenya, conducting some research when I first hear the words, baby care. I have no idea what this is, and so I ask the community to show me. They take me down the winding alleyways of the slum. We get to an unmarked property. I take my shoes off at the gate and open the door. I'm immediately struck by the smell of urine and feces. It's suffocating. And I look to turn back, but the community leader guides me forward. 
I've just come from the bright sunlight outside, and I can't see anything in this pitch black darkness. And so I inch my way ever so carefully forward until my foot hits something. And I look down, and it's a baby. A perfect little baby lying there, helplessly on the cold, dark floor. Horrified, instinctively, I lean forward to pick up the baby, and all of a sudden, images emerge from all around. Babies, 20, 25, 30, maybe even more, lying on that cold, hard ground. Awake, but silent. This, this is the best childcare option for working mothers in East Africa's urban slums. This, this dark, congested, unsafe, unsanitary space where children are left on the ground without love, without belonging, without stimulation, sometimes without food. Using that sadness and that anger, my partner, Afsal, and I began to ask ourselves the question, could we provide a higher quality early childhood care option for about the same cost that mothers were paying for this baby care, roughly about a dollar a day? We're big thinkers. We had so many ideas. But it wasn't until we enrolled in a PLUS Acumen course that we were able to turn those big, bold, crazy ideas into reality. We connected with mentors who pushed our thinking. We were given the skills and the tools to take our really sexy PowerPoint decks and turn it into a, into a prototype. And when we hit a point where we weren't quite sure how to move forward, it was a mentor, an acumen partner, Brad Rosenberg, who said, if funding is your issue, don't worry about it. Here's a check. That was huge. The fact that Brad believed in our idea and believed in us. That's what gave us the confidence to leave our six-figure salaries, take the leap, and start our social enterprise, Kidogo. Today, we have two pilot childcare centers up and running. We have enough capital in the bank to prove our innovative model. And we have strategic partnerships with some of the best institutions in the world, including IDEO.org, which was founded by a former Global Fellow. Now, when I walk through the winding alleyways of a slum in Nairobi, no longer do I see an unmarked property. I see the words, Chanzo Chamakubwa Nikidogo, Swahili for, all great things start small, Kidogo Early Childhood Center. And instead of silence, I hear the loud voices of children playing and laughing and singing and just being kids. And to me, that is the best feeling in the entire world. I come from a community that knows suffering too well. By the age of 10, I had lost my entire family of seven to easily preventable diseases such as AIDS in rural Western Uganda. My grandmother raised me under grass-touched roof. I studied by the kerosene lamp, which we often had no money to buy. At 18, I worked in a factory in the suburbs of Kampala, hauling boxes in a juice factory for $1.5 a day. 15 years later, I'm seated in a beautiful, warm home in upstate New York with 11 of my peers the current class of Acumen Global Fellows. We are sharing our purposes in life. Mine is dignity for our communities. As I stand up to speak about my purpose, my throat is choking, my heart is pounding, my mind is running with questions. If they find out that they are going to be serving in those communities, the same ones I come from. Will they think that I abandoned my community? Will they think that I abandoned my family? What will they say? As we each go around and share our purposes in life, my purpose is inextricably connected to theirs. 
I feel at home. As we go out to communities in Pakistan, in India, in West Africa, in East Africa, I feel that my impact alone is limited. But together, we can ensure that every community that we go out there to serve lives with dignity. Thank you. Fall 2013 is just another day at my job. I feel exhausted and irrelevant. What am I still even doing here? Looking for inspiration, I'm browsing Acumen website, and I find a picture of 2014 Global Fellows. They sit in a room full of sunshine, and Jacqueline is among them. That still image is so loud. Smiling faces, serious looks. I cannot hear the conversation, but I can sense the depth and intensity of the discussion. I can see myself there. I must be there. <laughs> a month later, I walk into the Acumen office for the first time. I feel thrill and terror. My friend who works here invited me to participate in a PLUS Acumen course, and we are here for our first group meeting. We start introducing ourselves and share what brought us here. There's a consultant who works on global healthcare and education issues. There's an investment banker who is passionate about agriculture development in Africa. There's an engineer who built utilities infrastructure in Asia. Listening to them speak, my hands are shaking. I feel sweat going down my spine. My mouth goes dry, but it's my turn to go. Hi, I'm Yulia Tarasova. I'm a math nerd who speaks English with Russian accent, works in finance, and dreams to make a world a better place. Usually people think I'm odd. They don't understand me. I'm odd? We are all odd here. <laughs> so different, yet so similar. I am connected to these strangers. I feel relieved. I feel home. Today, today I stand here, and in the audience, I see 11 smiling faces and serious looks. This is my cohort of 2015 Global Fellows. Soon, we leave to go different directions around the world. I'm going to Nairobi, Kenya, to work for Jehudi Kilima. My challenge, our challenge, is to make a change, to be a change. Sounds crazy? No, it feels quite right. Hey, I just got back from a village in Kenya, and I was talking to this little kid. He told me he can play football with his friends after school because he can study with his D-Light lantern at night. How cool is that? Great, says my best friend as she smiles. But I can see the blankness in her eyes. And in her embrace, I feel everything familiar drifting further and further away. This work is hard. It's isolating. I feel alone, and I'm intimidated by the unknown. But I made a choice. And I choose to stay. I close my eyes. And I see my cohort of smiling faces and serious looks. That is what brings me back. One thing you can count on at Acumen is growth. Whether it's personal, of your ideas, or your community. But be careful. Because when I stepped into here, I was forced to look in the mirror. I questioned my values, my ideas were challenged, and I felt uncomfortable. But it was in that moment that I felt alive. If you let yourselves, you will take an idea and turn it into something real, despite the hurdles you face along the way. 
You will be your best self, and you will give your best self. You will bring brightness in the darkest places you know. These stories represent the work that the acumen community does. But we're only beginning to understand the power of our ecosystem. So join us as we continue to unlock the magic and beauty within.